Hey, you caught me. Hey, everybody. Warner Wednesday. Glad you're here with us. How are you? How was your week? Uh, everything's pretty good, I guess, here. I'll say, Ross, I hope you're feeling better tonight up in New York City. I hope all is good. We had a good week, um, fairly good week, I guess. And Carol, I hope you're better in Indiana. I was getting my bad, get betters out of the way. But uh, anyway, uh, it is in my Opry anniversary this week. Uh, 22 years, is it, I think? Is that right? 24, like I say, 24. <laughs> 24 years uh, at the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, and that's right, 96. I was, uh, I became the 70, 72nd member, they called it that night, 72nd member of the Grand Ole Opry. Bill Anderson was, uh, he uh, inducted me. I started to say induced me. Somebody said that to me. I'm so glad Bill Anderson induced you into the Opry. <laughs> Somebody told me that night, a couple people. But anyway, uh, Chad Atkins played guitar with me, my hero. He was my guitar player that night, which was pretty awesome. And uh, I remember, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool night. I'd, I've been playing that Opry since I was 17. I played, uh, you know, I won't go through all that, but I played it forever since the early 70s, you know, played the, at the Ryman. And so then the, but finally I got to be a member in 70. Or ninety six, so, but uh, so very cool. Uh, gosh, my tickled to death watching the Opry. Speaking of the Opry, this week we watched. Uh, uh, everybody did a great job, and here comes Blake Shelton on, and he sings one of my songs. He sang "I Should Be With You," which knocked me out. And uh, he texts me that that afternoon. He texts me and says, "Man, I hope you're not offended. I'm going to do your song on the Opry." And I go, I'm texting back, offended, are you serious? I'm honored and thrilled that you would want to do it. And it knocked me out that he said it was uh, Gwen's favorite song of mine. And I guess they had been listening to some of my stuff he was telling me. So uh, that's really sweet. And uh, I think he did a heck of a job on it. I loved the way he did it. So Blake, kudos and, and thank you, man, for the kind words. I really appreciate that. I hope you guys had a good Mother's Day, all you mothers. We did Hand That Rocks a Cradle last week for you and for Mother's Day, and uh, it's a strange Mother's Day. People will remember this Mother's Day, that's for sure. And uh, so, But I think I heard someone say on TV this week, I heard someone say, it's time we have fun. And so that's what I'm all about. I'm ready for some fun, and, and uh, it's time. You know, keep be, being smart, you know, but uh, have fun too. It's time to have some fun. And I was... I got a kick out of uh, Brian White. I saw he, he, my buddy Brian White, he put a post the other day, and he was talking about how many folks had hit him up about the Tiger King. You know, he's in the, I think the number four episode, uh, Joe Exotic comes into his office, and there's pictures of country stars all over the wall, actually all kinds of stars, but there's a picture of Brian White back there in 8 by 10 and I thought that was cool. So not to be outdone, Brian, I thought I would... I had someone this week send me a picture. I was I didn't even know this, but I guess I made an episode of Matlock with Andy Griffith, you know. <laughs> I guess he comes into a some place and it's like a I think it's a radio station or somewhere and I didn't even know this, but I they sent me a still picture of it. There's a poster of me in the back, so which is real I, I made Matlock. That's kind of cool. So <laughs> it's not Tiger King, but it's pretty cool. So uh anyway, I'll uh, I'll do a as I usually do, I try to do uh, a few old Steve Warner songs, and uh, so I'll do one that's we've been asked a lot this week for. I did it in our very first episode. By the way, this is number eight tonight, and uh, so uh, I'll do this for all you small town girls out there. Like the eyes in the subway station It's ten stories to my desk In the smoggy sky But after five I'm headed home to heaven To an easy world There ain't nothing like the love Of a small town Go 
coffee and the sound of her sweet voice calling. Country station on the kitchen radio. That's how I know there's still a little magic in this crazy world. There ain't nothing like a love. The city feel like walks in the cool country rain. No traffic and the sound of the street is quiet. Fifth Avenue is dressed in a foot of snow Nowhere to go But underneath the covers Lovers while the snowflakes fall There ain't nothing like the love Of a small town girl No, there ain't nothing like the love Of a small town girl And the place goes crazy. Well, you're the audience that. goes nuts. I can hear the applause. Um, <laughs> some people have been asking for the tuning of I Should Be With You again tonight. Can you oh. go ahead and give them a heads up yep. that you've done? Yeah, I do get asked about that a bunch. In fact, Blake, <laughs> it's funny because Blake and I talked about this the other day uh, via text, but when he did I Should Be With You, we get asked about that quite a bit, and so... Uh, we did a video, uh, a little video piece, me explaining that tuning and how that, how I kind of stumbled onto it and and what the tuning is exactly. It's kind of based out of an open G. But if you go to YouTube, I think right, Karen, Steve if you go my page. my excellent producer, Karen Gale, right there. And, uh, but anyway, go to Steve Warner, uh, Your page my on page YouTube. on YouTube. There's a video we just put it up of how to do that tuning and I play it'll be I'm, up this week it'll be up this week that's right sorry and I'd actually do the song I think part of the song is show you some of those licks and stuff so let's see I want to give a shout out I talked to my pal Anita Cochran this week I talked to her we talked and had a nice visit uh what if I said boy it'd be great to have her in here we could sing that sometime when we when it all gets a little more normal maybe we can do it she really is basically my neighbor she don't live that far so uh, but anyway, uh, love to have her. Uh, and it was great to catch up, I should say. Great to catch up. Uh, I was knocked out last week. I had LRP. My buddy Leroy Parnell was watching. And, and Leroy, I hope he's on tonight. But Leroy was watching. I think David Bellamy was on, my Bellamy brother's pal. I hadn't seen my buddies, the Bellamy's, in a long time. and uh, So it's great to, to, that they were on. And I think Mark Wills, I talked to Mark, and Mark was on. And, Mark does a thing every Monday night, so you might check him out. He does a great job. He's got a, a, a Facebook Live that he does on Monday nights, I believe. So a uh, great friend, Mark, and so check him out. I'll say hi to the Blackstones up in Cincinnati, Ohio, outside of Cincinnati, the Bliss family. It's Ohio night, I guess, but the Bliss family. And uh, Gene Cash, I'll say hi to Gene. And uh, let's see, uh, I'm wishing well for all the folks at Fair Oaks up in uh, Russell Springs, uh, Russell County, Kentucky. They're in Jamestown, actually, but uh, all of our friends at Fair Oaks, they do a great job of taking care of the elderly and, 
and uh, as they did my father. So uh, I'm glad to, I hope they're doing well, I should say. And so let's see, where are we? I was going to tell you, oh, by the way, there's a, Karen, there's a, I can tell everybody that we made some playlists on Spotify. Yes. Uh, for Spotify. The one is a deep cuts of some of the stuff that I've written for other artists. All tracks that, you, a lot of stuff you probably haven't heard that I wrote for other artists. Uh, really interesting, I think, stuff you'll you'll find in some really, really good uh, records or good recordings, I should say. And uh, that's Spotify. And then there's a deep cuts of, of uh, my stuff, I think, right? There's... The show. From the show, yeah, the that's what I mean. The actual recordings. The actual recordings, not not the not me playing them here live on the guitar with, with my warts and all. This will be the actual whatever I'm doing. It'll be the actual recording of it, the the inspiration or whatever. Like for example, I love the last week. I think it was last week or week before I did California Cotton Fields, uh, the Dallas Frazier great song, and that was the inspiration for that. Of course, I. A lot of people have cut it, but I always love Merle Haggard's version, so I'm pretty sure Merle's version is up there. So, And I want to tell you, I'll tell you, people ask about stories, so I thought I'd tell you a quick little story about uh, when I used to go up every year in the summer, I'd go up and play in Lexington, Kentucky. We would play the Children's Charity Classic. Uh, the, the proceeds go to all kinds of children, the uh, causes for uh, underprivileged kids and uh Kids that need, you know, the un kids that need the help, you know, and stuff. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to get out, but anyway, it was a children's charity classic. We a lot of tons of big stars were there. They all came in. A lot of folks came in from Hollywood, and you would don't know who would be there. It was hosted at this time by my pal Doug Flynn and and my buddy Kyle Macy, who used to sell T-shirts for me on the road when he wasn't playing for the Chicago Bulls or the or the Phoenix Suns or the Indiana Pacers. You know, he. He uh, he came on the road with us. We had some great pickup basketball games on the road, by the way, with with him, uh, star from University of Kentucky, uh, champions, you know, NCAA champs, nineteen seventy eight. But anyway, uh, Kyle <clears throat> Kyle was the host of the Children's Charity Classic. He and Doug, so I used to go up and do it. Well, this one year they asked me. They said, "Would you be interested in? We're going to have like a little cocktail party. I know you're going to play." In the evening, you know, with the band and the whole shebang. But would you be up for coming and playing a few songs with just a guitar in the hotel in the in a like a big ballroom? And I said, sure, I'll be glad, Kyle. Whatever you want. So, so I go and I plug in my little amplifier and I'm playing some. They had a little band set up there that was going to play later, you know, a, a little trio or something. And they had a set of drums and a keyboard. So I started playing couple songs of, uh, as people are having cocktails and stuff and so I um, I did a, I remember I did the song I did a couple songs and then I was gonna I did what if, what uh, what I didn't do is what I was gonna play so I started off playing what I didn't do did the intro started playing I did the I did the intro I get into it and I go, I didn't cheat, I didn't lie, so her leaving took me by surprise. And then about through there, I hear drums playing. Somebody's banging on drums, and it wasn't, it was okay, it wasn't great, but it was okay. And uh, so in my mind, I'm like getting a little bit not happy, because I'm thinking, who has got the nerve to just get up and start playing? It's obviously not a super duper drummer but I'm thinking man this takes some gall and I turn around to look who it was and it was Bo Diddley <laughs> Bo Diddley had wanted to there he was he had his whole you know he looked like Bo Diddley he had his hat and his glasses and it's I mean it was awesome and so I was really pumped now because Bo is Bo Diddley you know so so anyway he was banging away doing some tom rolls and crashes the cymbals got up and played with me and we when I got done, I I had to I gave him a small little intro and I went back and hugged him and first time we met, but I we met again on the on the set of a TV show. Fast forward a few years, we met a couple of times down the road, and, uh, but I always thought that was so cool. Bo Diddley was playing drums with me, so I thought you might uh, get a kick out of that. Okay, time to play some music. Uh,
speaking of Merle Haggard, there's a song that he did, uh, wrote it. Love, love him, man. He was simply the best. And uh, he did a song. I'm thinking it was about 78. I might be wrong, but somewhere in there, he did a song called The Farmer's Daughter. That I always just loved and uh, never did record it, but what a great song, what a writer. Tonight, there'll be candle lights and roses in this little country chapel that's almost fallen down. There'll be tears in this old farmer's eyes this evening. As I give my one possession to that city boy from town, his hair is a little longer than we're used to. But I guess I should find something good to say about the man who's won. Farmer's daughter, and will soon become my son in law today. Mama left eight years ago, December, and it's hard to be a mom and daddy too. But somehow we made a home of this old farmhouse And love was all my baby ever knew well, He could be the richest man in seven counties And not be good enough to take her hand But he says he really loves the farmer's daughter And I know the farmer's daughter loves the man have a surprise for you just a bit. Somebody asked me too uh, the other day, I had somebody, I guess with the the uh, Last Dance, the thing, the documentary about Michael Jordan, I had some people, a lot of people were asking me about basketball, what my thoughts were and who my favorites were. And some guy asked me if I uh, if I'd ever met Larry Bird, and I would, the answer to that is yes. He's from Southern Indiana. I'm from kind of the middle part of Indiana, but we did crop, we did meet, and I met him several times. I knew Larry, still know him pretty well. And it's funny, I've started to bring it and show you guys, but uh, I met him. Uh, we used to go to the Boston Garden, the old Boston Garden, and watch him play. Just we'd just take a bus up there and watch. It was 
so great. It was the those were the years too, you know, the Mikhail Parrish, Bird, DJ Ainge, you know, that that bunch. It was so good. Scott Webman and but Bird was a you know, he's a country fan. Or he always used to be. I don't know, I haven't talked to him for quite a while, but he, he always liked your memory. That was early on, about the time we met, your memory had been a hit. So I know he liked that song. And I asked him one time, I I uh we socialized a few times. We went out and after his games and stuff like that. And my friend Mel Ray Melchiori, the trainer of the Celts, is who introduced me to Larry. So, Ray, I'll always be grateful because you know I'm crazy about uh, Bird, number 33. But I remember uh, once I was joking with Bird and I said, hey, man, would you, I'll send you one of my guitars if you'll send me one of your signed uh, Celts jerseys. And, I mean, I look up about a month later, I look in the mail and I get a package and it's one of his jerseys. And he signed it. It's a green 30. I should have brought it to show you. I'd wear it, but it goes all the way down to my knees. He was six foot nine, six ten almost. And so, but anyway, he signed it for me and on one of the threes. And so uh, that was pretty cool. And I, I sent him one of my guitar. I took actually took him a guitar up to uh, to Indiana and gave it to him. And uh, so, but I, he was always my favorite. Got to stick with those Hoosiers, you know what I'm saying. So. Do this little piece of a little piece of a Willie Nelson song, uh, just a little piece, and uh, we have a little special guest who might come out in a moment, so I'll tease you with that. But uh, you know, Willie Nelson is legal now. I think in six or seven states, he's legal. So uh, anyway, and we can't wait to get on the road again. So. Maybe one of these days. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Play by living's making music with my friends. <laughs> and I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I won't ever see again. Oh, I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. Like a band of gypsies, we go down the highway. We're the best of friends, insisting that the world keep turning our way. And our way is on the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends. No, I can't wait to get on the road again. We go down the highway We're the best of friends Insisting that the world Keep turning our way And our way Is on the road again I just can't wait To get on the road again The life I love Is making music With my friends No, I can't wait To get on the road again I can't wait To get on life's highway again Oh, maybe one day we'll do some shows, but uh, Willie Nelson, man, that's a cool song. I did a little thing with Larry Gatlin recently. We filmed, uh, I think a bunch of people are filming, so hopefully that'll happen. I think Willie, Willie had a birthday last week, too. I think it was last week. He was, yeah, it was last week. I think he was, I won't get into the 80s something, but man, what a treasure Willie is for all of us. And I was honored to get to be a guest on Willie's Roadhouse a few weeks back, uh, I was on the, there being a guest DJ uh, representing the Grand Ole Opry. So, which this week is my 24th year as a Grand Ole Opry member, and I'm very proud of that. So, we have a special guest. We've been quarantining together for, for uh, well, what is it now? Nine weeks, I think. All this started, and we've we're quarantined together, so I don't have to do it virtually. He's here, and. Uh, 
I always say this, I embarrass him, but he's one of my favorite guitar players. If he's no relation at all, he's still my one of my very top favorite guitar players. Certainly slide players in the whole world. And, and I'm honored and tickled that he's going to play with me. Uh, my son, Ryan Warner, is with us. So come on, Ryan. Hey. Come on, man. I feel like I'm showing up in a uh, Mr. Rogers episode. <laughs> I know. Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> I know it does feel. You know what's funny to me is you get done playing, you go like, and then you go crickets. You know, it's like, man. I know it took me a while to kind of get used to that. Not that I'm so used to that applause, but boy, you miss it when it's, there's yeah. nothing there, you know. So yeah. let me make sure I'm in tune, but. All right. This one's close. I love that harmony sovereign there too, man. It's so cool. Yeah, one of my faves. How long have you had that guitar? Man? Uh, 16, probably 16, 17 years. That's a funky little guitar, man. Yeah. We we actually, I'll say this. Ryan and I actually wrote a song the other day. We we, uh, I'm all over the slide stuff right now. He, I was at Ryan's house and he was playing. Uh, like I say, we're quarantined together, just us three, and and we were, we brought some guitar. stuff. Yeah, you were yeah you were playing that guitar, and when I walked in the house, and he was playing this cool slide part, and I just went, I just started humming this little thing. I go, that just sounds like that needs a that's a song. What you're that lick you were doing, and mm -hmm. so we wrote the coolest song, and he came out day before yesterday and recorded some electric slide that's just, I mean, just off the charts. But anyway, so I got thinking, and we all thought, man, it kind of reminded me of Lowell Georgie kind of little feet thing. So we one of the all time greatest. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And, and uh, what a great player. But anyway, I thought we might do a little George song. To... I am just a vagabond, a drifter on the road. Eloquent profanity, it just rolls right off my tongue. I have dined in palaces, I've drank wine with kings and queens. But darling, sweet darling, now you're the best thing I've ever seen. Sing and roll me. So nice and easy. Take my independence with no apprehension, no tension. We'll walk and talk and sweet This country, Lord, never to the ocean. But I haven't seen girls that could sing so sweet as those angels that live in Houston. Sing in harmony, in unison. so slow and easy Take my
Hey, let me ask you something before you take off. I, before uh, you go. Yeah, before we go. I, I got to brag on Ryan and say, uh, I'm going to do a Gretsch guitar takeover pretty soon. We're going we're working on that for Gretsch folks and on their gonna, uh, Instagram. on their Instagram, yeah, their, or Facebook or Instagram. I'm not sure which, but but anyway, you were you, Ryan's so modest, but Ryan and my friend Jeff Sin, our friend Jeff Sin was the Jeff Sin, yeah, the original Sin. Uh, he they they were very very instrumental, no pun intended. Uh, in helping me design my new Gretsch signature model, the Nashville Gentleman. And so, uh, anyway, a lot of my the influences, of course, from the finger-picking parts. Of the, that guitar appeals to a lot of the Czech guys, uh, the Chetaholics, I call it, or the people that play finger style and all that stuff. It, I think that guitar really appeals to them. But the part that the other side of that coin is the stuff that I really tapped in for your part is the making it be yeah. for a lot of different kinds of music. So I don't know if you want to speak to that, but I mean, your influences were great in that. Yeah, but the pickup choices you picked without me and the neck was the Paul Yandel, the kind of Chet sounding yeah, pickup, yeah. but the back one that you picked by ear without me influencing you is the one I would have picked anyway. It's the same one that was out of the Malcolm Young Gretsch, the, the ACDC, you know. Yeah, so you always really loved rocking. that Malcolm Gretsch too, yeah. didn't you? And, yeah. So underrated player, Malcolm mm -hmm. Young, man. He was a great, great player. And, and, uh, and the White but I Falcons, will, too. Sorry? And the White Falcons. We like the yeah, long yeah, White the, Falcon yeah. link. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing that you're, you were humongous influence, among other things, though, is the that true arc bridge that you, you, you were preaching to me about that well, way before we even got into it. I just noticed into it. Dwayne Eddy's had it, and I knew you'd want it if he had it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. I well said. I mean, and that's a great bridge and I love mm -hmm, it. And it is. Yeah. That whole guitar though, I love that setup the way it turned out that the the back I'm getting technical and stuff here, but that back pickup has a feature where well, actually it turns both pickups into uh with all three, all the pickups into single coil yeah. that goes into uh it's with got some the, hidden sounds. With, yeah, it's got some hidden stuff that a lot of a lot of Gretches don't have. It's a well, I mean, it's a Unique feature just to my guitar, my model is that push pull that turns those pickups into single coil, which mm -hmm. is really cool. It gives that guitar a lot of uh, versatility, I think, and I really appreciate your input because yeah. you and Jeff really yeah. killed it, man. It was. But the color was your choice, and that was that's <laughs> the thing that black. everybody that's the thing everybody flips out first. They see that color. Well, you know, I got to think about the color. It's. Uh, I love, I love as you well know, because I've wore you out for many years about with my magic. I love magic uh -huh. cards and any close-up magic. So, magic black is what I wanted to come up with for that. That's the name of that color. We came up with a metal flaky kind of black color. Uh, mm -hmm. That's you know, it's got gold flakes in it, so it's really really fun. So yeah. anyway, man, I'm glad you played with yeah, us. Thanks well, for being here. I'm gonna go. Uh... Thanks for being. At our house. In the neighborhood. <laughs> At our house. <laughs> some yeah, mom yeah. made some brownies, so save me some of those. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. Ryan Warner. See ya. <laughs> A bunch of people said next time can he do Stingray, so we'll, yeah, we'll have to. Ryan, we'll have to. Yeah, I know. We'll have to set Acoustic. up some. Woo, I don't know. That'll be, yeah, we'll, let me roll that around, roll them easy under here. Let me think on that. That'd be, it's very difficult without a whole band. You need to. You need Michael Rose and Greg Morrow back there behind you, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see if we can work on that thing. But uh, let's see. Uh, well, that was cool. What great slide, uh, man! Wasn't that? Let me get back in my back in my position. I'm a proud pop, but man, what I mean, what I said. Uh, you know, and I'll brag on him. He's not in the room now, but I'll brag on him for a moment. He's done twice as much stuff as I've done. He's been on Letterman and and Jimmy Kimmel. He's been he's done tons more stuff than I've ever done. And and he's you know the list of people he's worked with. And I'll quit bragging on my son, but the list of people that he's either recorded or played with is like Dave Mustaine and uh, Megadeth and uh, Gene Simmons and uh, Jewel. Jewel and uh, Chris Cornell and I mean on I can keep going. You know Leanne Rhymes and uh, Shooter Jennings and uh, Gary Allen, of course, and uh, but anyway, enough of that. He'll be wanting to get paid for this now, kid. But uh, anyway, he's yeah, I'm a super fan. But uh, let's see. I wanted my wife Karen, my super duper producer back here, and my cameraman slash producer, brownie maker, all that stuff. She also is a quilter, and uh, 
she makes these beautiful quilts. And speaking of Blake, you you made one for Blake a while. I won't get into the details on that, but you made quilt a, a quilt for Blake a while several years ago. And so, but anyway, she makes these beautiful quilts. And I got a there's a song I wrote because I've kind of become anybody that's any guys out there that this is not a song about it's about quilting, but it's not about quilters. It's more about the quilting husband that waits for the wife while they're in there in there going through their all the fabrics and wanting to buy the stuff and you're usually they most quilt stores have a little a, a tiny it's usually one little chair with about three magazines that's where the husbands wait for their wives to to do their shopping and there's a place up in Paducah that's a like a mega quilt store that's man they're like a they're the ultra place so that's so, a good six hours for you in the car it is. It's a good six hours. So I really try to have a lot of, a lot of stuff to do, you know. So while you're waiting on your wife to go through all the, you, you quilt husbands know exactly what I mean. But I wrote this silly little song, uh, called, called the Quilt Store Blues. So I thought I might, you know, attempt it tonight. I've done it a few times, but uh, let's see. It's a. Uh... We're pulling into Paducah, a super duper fa quilt and fabric store. And just who is this crazy woman? She's practically climbing out the car door. She mumbles something about a big sale going on. She kisses me and says goodbye. She hurries out across the parking lot. With a dazed look in her eye I got the sitting in my car With love waiting on my sweetie blues I got my iPad, my iPhone I got snacks and new headphones I got plenty to do I know the drill Cause I've been here before you never know when she might be coming right back out the door. I got these sitting in my car at the quilt store waiting on my sweetie blues. see her coming but wait it's only a quarter after one she's got bags yeah lots and lots of bags and I wonder how much damage she has done she hops in the car and I'm thinking man we're out of here we'll be back in our house before too long then she says honey if you don't mind there's about three more quilt stores I want to hit on our way home I got the sitting in my car At the quilt store Waiting on my sweetie blue I got plenty of gasoline Some magazines I know where there's a Dairy Queen I got plenty to do Yeah We know the drill Cause we've been here before We never know when we gonna be coming Right back out the door I got the Sitting in my car at the quilt store, waiting on my sweetie blues. I got the sitting in my car at the quilt store, waiting on my my long arm operating, my application. My little sweetie blue. Yeah. Sorry, huh? I had to do it. Oh, right. <laughs> For all you guys out there, quilt, lots of a lot of quilt husbands, quilt guys. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's a bunch.
It's always fun, though, whenever we travel, when Karen's with me, we travel the world or wherever we go. I mean, we'll land. Like, I remember landing in Frankfurt, Germany one time, and we didn't even, I was so freaking tired. Uh, you know, I was jet lagged so bad. And I was just about to lay my head down, and she goes, hey, there's a quilt store about a mile from here. And I went, oh, my gosh. You got to go to, you're in Germany. You got to go to a German quilt store, you know. So we went to one. So <laughs> anyway. I had a request from a, I get, I'm going to say her name uh, uh, because she's one of our oldest friends, uh, Jean Akers. Is that, I think I said it right, didn't I, Karen? It's on my, I, I probably should double check it, but I know she's been one of our longtime fans forever. Uh, it's, but uh, she was asking about a song while I tune up. My mind just went to Cleveland for a second there. On. I'm so sorry, but I, I know she's been asking for this song. She's been our, she's been our fans. She's been a fan for a long time. Gene has Gene Acres and. She's been, gosh, I think she's been with us since day one, since my very first album. As a matter of fact, the song she was wanting is from my very first album, and I've used to do it on the road a lot. I haven't done it. This song, bear with me, because I haven't done this song in. 15 or 20 years probably, but it's, uh, I always love this song. All right, Gene. You asked me to give up on you. You say that we are through. Mm -hmm. came to a quick end before it even had a chance to begin well, who knows what magic we could have had it could have been wonderful or it could have been We'll never know, we'll never know, we'll never know, we'll never know. You say he's got his hold on you, I can't believe it's true. I shouldn't doubt your decision Cause baby you're the only one Knows what you want But who knows what magic we could have had It could have been wonderful Or it could have been but we'll never know, we'll never know, we'll never know, we'll never know.
we'll never know we'll never know we'll never know Gene. Well, that takes me back. I remember cutting that. It's one of the first things I did. Actually, it may have been the very first thing. I had cuts, uh, Bob Lumen cuts. I had a Conway Twitty cut by that time. He did I'm Already Taken, you know, on his Mr. T album. But that was the first cut that I ever did on an album of mine. It, obviously, it was my first album. So that was a big, big deal. And Berg and White wrote some beautiful strings on that, my pal Berg. And... Uh, and that was pretty cool. Paul Yandel, my pal, but uh, my buddy old Paul played guitar on that too. So, and Reggie, Reggie was on that record too. All right, I'll talk about Chad Atkins for a minute. I want to tell some more stories. I want to tell you guys. Uh, I used to go up to Chet's office uh, on Music Row. I'd come in and pop in every now and then. And I would do it just unannounced, or I'd call him sometimes and say, hey, let's go to lunch and or whatever. But I would just sometimes just drop in. If I saw his Mercedes sitting out back, I knew he was there. There was a, that where he was on Music Row, there was a long iron uh, stairway that went a back, like a back entrance that in the parking lot that he would always come down, or his car was right at the foot of the steps. And so if his car was there, I'd pull in. And I remember going in one day, and I walked in, and he did this a lot. Chet would do this a bunch. He would he would put in cassettes. He had a boom box, and he'd put cassette tapes in in it. And he would just sit and make tapes for people, Billy Ed Wheeler or Garrison Keeler or somebody. He had several people, Lenny Bro or somebody. He'd, be, he'd make these little, like, radio programs kind of like. He would record and tell stories, and then he'd play a couple songs and say, he would, like, for example, he would say, Lenny, here's a song. I Remember this song, Lenny, I used to play? And then he would record it on a cassette, and then he would put it in the mail and send it to his friends. And he did that a lot. I, they must have done that. They must have reciprocated and done that back to him. But I walked in one day, and he had his boombox sitting up on his, what was his little kitchen area there. And he was, and he walked in, and he was in the middle. He was, he was kind of hunkered down in front of his boombox, and he was making a tape. He was obviously recording. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, he, and when I walked in, he just stopped playing, and he looked at me, and he said, Oh, Garrison. Garrison, Steve Warner just walked in. Steve, grab that bass over there. And uh, and I remember he said he was making a tape for Garrison Keeler at Prairie Home Companion. And so I grabbed the bass and I go, what are we doing, Chad? And he goes, let's do that old song. And he did, he was doing some real, really old song. And I kind of, uh, what I like to say, I kind of went to Cleveland and at one place I didn't really know where it was going. I had no idea what this song was. And, and I remember Chad was looking at me and he goes, he he during while we're actually recording on the tape he said he goes good lord he goes don't you know the title of that song and i go chet i'm sorry i don't know every song known to man like you do he knew and he did he knew every song he knew so many songs i mean old songs he knew like really back in the 20s and 30s he just knew he had a a, a photographic memory or something he knew songs he just had them down so anyway uh i Chet's daughter Merle, who was, is a dear, dear friend of mine. I just love her to death, and I hope she's doing well. And with all this quarantining and stuff, I hope she's getting along. But anyway, Merle, after Chet passed, I was at Merle's uh, house one day. Well, actually, we were at Chet and Leona's house. I was at Chet's house, and Merle was there. And Merle, Chet had just passed, and Merle said, "I got something I want you to have. If you, if you are, if you want it, you can have it." And she had taken that boom box that we used to record on in Chet's office and she gave it to me and so anyway I brought it to show you guys I think it's so cool it's interesting too but that's Chet's old boom box that he used to record on you know so isn't that funny isn't that cool I just want everybody to see it look how big this thing is it's heavy too but this is a that's a serious boom box the, the that's the epitome of a real boom box right here but Chet recorded on this a bunch and and uh, and I did too with him, so I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. 
So anyway, thing is heavy. So I thought I would do, uh, speaking of Chet, I thought I'd tell you this uh, a Brad Paisley story. I had a call one night uh, from Brad, and I've got to tell you, I've known Brad since he was what, Karen? I mean, we've known their family. About we've 10. known about 10, 11 years old. Brad was real little. We met him. Uh, they're from around Wheeling, you know, their family, Doug and his Brad's mom. Their family is just beautiful family. and So we've known him, and I used to play the Wheeling Jamboree, Capital City Music Hall there in Wheeling, and Brad was a cast member and just killed him every night when I saw him play in there. He would just tore him up. And even at a young, young age, he was he was just, you could tell he was special. You know, he was going to really achieve and do do things, you know, as he did. But so one, one night, now fast forward, what year was that? He did an album called Play, and he asked me to play on, uh, he asked me to play on a song called Cluster Pluck, which had all these telly players I was honored that he asked me. He had everybody that plays a telly known to man, I think, on that record. And uh, but then he called and he said, "Man, also would he said I want you to, if you don't mind." He goes, "I've got a song I'm working on and I want you to help me finish it." And so um, I said, "Sure, man. What's the idea?" He said, "Well, I've got it." He said, uh, uh, "It's going to be more than just this song. It's a, it's about." He said, "I've got a." He said, I've written the first verse, and uh, I want you to help me finish it. I, my verse, he said, is going to be about a guy named Hank Goddard. That guy was, he was uh, a big amuse for Brad, really. He was his an older guy that let him, Brad played in bands with him, and and uh, he was, a I think, very uh, instrumental in, in helping Brad along the way. He let You know, he coached him and helped him a lot, mentored him. And was a real hero to Brad. So he said, I've written a, my verse about Hank Goddard. And he goes, I want you to write the second verse and write it about Chad. Because I know how the, he means, what he means to you. And and he, he was my hero, of course. So, and Chad had passed, you know, at this time. So I thought, well, I'll do it. And I'll bring, he said, I want you to play on it. So I said, you know, I'm going to bring, I didn't say this, but I thought of it. I thought, well, I'm going to take Chad's guitar. He'd given me a guitar. So I took it, took it with me. And um, so I get to the studio and we get ready. I, ri I wrote my last verse. I wrote the verse and it, I thought it turned out great and was real happy with it. And we finished the song and we had a session booked at the castle uh, and so Brad did. And so we go out there and Frank Rogers produced, great producer. We go out to the studio and um, I come in with Chet's guitar and I think, well, I'm gonna, I'll knock Brad out here. I'll just, I'm gonna show him I brought Chet's guitar. He'll think that's so cool that I'm playing Chet's actual guitar on this. So I open up the case, and as it happened to be, the little flyer, the the program from Chet's um, service was in the case underneath the neck, laying right under the neck right here. And it, so when I opened the case, Brad, when I, when I told him, I laid it down there in the studio floor, and I said, Brad, this is Chet's guitar. I'm going to play it. And he goes, oh, that's so cool. And he said, I, I got Hank's. Just by chance, he goes, I brought Hank's guitar. He goes, I borrowed it and brought Hank Goddard's guitar. And so I'm going to play that. And so I go, oh, how cool is that? We didn't know. We didn't talk about it or anything. Well, we I opened the case, and there's that program from the memorial service. And Brad opens the case from Hank's, and his memorial service booklet is underneath the neck of that guitar. And I got cold chills. It just killed me. And uh, so... There, both of those guitars are laying side by side. We got pictures and we hugged and had a tear or two over that. And uh, but we cut the song and uh, I'll do it for you if I can get through it. I don't have my pal Brad Paisley with me tonight, but uh, if I can get through it, I will do it. But how cool is that, man? I tell you, I just, I just had cold chills seeing those two memorial programs laying there, the same position, and everything. Uh, let's see if I can move. I haven't done this song I've never done this song live so see that's a drop D yeah sorry about that like a boat on a river this bus is floating down the soul highway. 
looking out the window I think about how I got here today Anyone who's anywhere Had some help to get in there, it's true One of the reasons I get to do the things I do I met this angel with calloused hands that led this boy into his band. Under his wings, I learned to fly on these six strings through this line. I can hear him in my playing, although he's gone. And I owe him so much more than just his song. Like a leaf that had fallen, I was drifting down the stream. Mr. Guitar came into my life. Let me live my dream Well, his gritch is still speaking Still teaching us a ton He was my friend and my hero All wrapped up in one I met this angel With calloused hands That let this Naive boy into his band Under his wing I learned to fly On these six strings into my life You can hear him in my playing Although he's gone And I owe him so much more than just this song Every face we see On every stage we're on With every note we play They live on They live on They Thank you, Brad, for letting me be a part of that, that album, and I really appreciate that. And thank you, Chad Atkins, for your uh, mentorship and being my hero. We miss you. I do want to say before we take off that uh, be sure to go to Facebook Live, and in a few moments, my buddy Clint Black is going to be doing his very first Facebook Live tonight from his uh, studio at his home, and it's going to be spectacular. You need to see it. You know how Clint is. He's Clint, man. It's going to be good. So go over to Clint Black Live and catch my buddy Clint. And try to be kind to each other this week. Uh, always be kind. We'll see you guys on the down the road on the next edition of Warner Wednesday. So take care. Bye-bye.